Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yesh Chonzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 25th of November. Indian state criminalizes forced religious conversions by marriage. Foreign donors pledge 12 billion US dollars over four years for Afghanistan with tougher conditions. And Pakistan cabinet approves anti-rape laws providing for harsh punishments. And now for all the details. To control the rise of cases in new coronavirus infections, several Indian state governments imposed severe restrictions, among which was the rise in fine imposed for people not wearing masks at public places. While Himachal Pradesh state reintroduced night curfew in four of the worst hit districts, Punjab also imposed night curfew, doubling fine for flouting COVID guidelines. Even as India continues to report less than 50,000 new COVID-19 cases every day for almost a week, several cities saw a worrying spike of cases in new infections just after the festive season. Several state governments have imposed severe restrictions, among which was the rise in fine imposed for people not wearing masks at public places in a bid to control the rise of cases. The Punjab state government on Wednesday decided to impose night curfew in all the towns and cities from December 1. The restrictions will remain in place for seven hours between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. The government has also doubled the fine for flouting COVID-19 guidelines to Rs 1,000, that is almost 14 US dollars. Himachal Pradesh that saw a sudden spike in coronavirus cases with the reopening of hotels and resorts also decided to impose night curfew in four districts that are preferred tourist destinations. The government also hiked the penalty for not wearing masks to 13.54 US dollars. हमारे हिमाचल में खासकर देखा जाए तो कोई ज्यादा मतलब एक्टिविटीज होती नहीं है रात को बहुत कम है जैसे कोई शादी ब्याह हो गया या इस तरह की एक्टिविटीज हैं वो बड़ी लिमिटेड हैं पहले तो खैर शादी ब्याह थे नहीं अब इस दौरान जरा काफी हो रहे हैं तो हो सकता है कि उस लिहाज से देखा हो कि भाई शादी ब्याह में ज्यादा फैल रहे हैं इसलिए बंद किया गया हो India reported 44,376 new cases in a day, taking the total coronavirus cases to 9,222,216, while the death toll surged to 134,699. The Indian government's focus has been on ramping up COVID-19 testing facilities across the country. The cabinet of India's northern Uttar Pradesh state ruled by Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bharatiya Janata Party has cleared a draft ordinance to check unlawful religious conversions and interfaith marriages with the sole intention of changing a girl's religion, with provision for jail term of up to 10 years. Critics have condemned the move as an encroachment on personal liberty and attempt to create a communal divide in the country. India's ruling BJP, the Bharatiya Janata Party, approved a decree in northern Uttar Pradesh state on Tuesday, laying out prison terms for anyone compelling others to convert their faith or luring them into these conversions through marriage. The move follows a campaign by hardline Hindu groups against some interfaith marriages that they describe as love jihad, accusing Muslim men of engaging in a conspiracy to turn Hindu women away from their religion by seducing them. Under the new law, a marriage will be declared null and void if the sole intention was to change a girl's religion. Those getting the conversion done in violation of the law would have to face jail term of up to 10 years. A man and woman belonging to different religions will have to give two months' notice to the district magistrate before they get married and will be allowed to tie the knot if there are no objections. 
और हमारा लक्ष्य यही है कि उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर यह लोगों को पता चलना चाहिए कि छल और प्रपंच से धोखाधड़ी से किसी को गुमराह करके अपना नाम छिपा करके अपना धर्म छिपा करके जो धोखा देने का अब तक काम होता रहा है वो आगे नहीं होने पाएगा उसके लिए कानून का सिकंजा तैयार हो गया द बीजेपी रूल स्टेट्स ऑफ हरियाणा एंड मध्य प्रदेश हैव ऑल्सो सॉट टू ब्रिंग अ सिमिलर लॉ एट लीस्ट फाइव ऑपोजिशन रूल स्टेट्स हैव कंडेम दी मूव एज एन इंक्रोचमेंट ऑन पर्सनल लिबर्टी एंड एन अटेम्प टू क्रिएट अ कम्युनल डिवाइड इन दंट्री मूविंग ऑन Foreign donors demanded an immediate ceasefire in Afghanistan on Tuesday in a virtual global donor conference hosted from the UN in Geneva as they pledged around 12 billion US dollars in aid over 4 years but tied their money to civil rights being upheld in peace talks with the Taliban. Foreign donors pledged a projected 12 billion US dollars in civilian aid to Afghanistan. Over the next 4 years at a virtual global donor conference hosted from the UN in Geneva on Tuesday but many made it conditional on protecting human rights and making progress on peace talks in a major shake up for the country's economy That preliminary figure was a drop from 15.2 billion US dollars pledged in 2016 for 4 years despite coming at a time when Afghanistan's needs are growing due to rising violence and the coronavirus pandemic Many donors also put strict conditions on future funding and some officially committed for just the next year. Assuming annual commitments are expected to stay in the same level for the 4 year period in total then this would mean that 12 million dollars. Um the decision on continuation of aid at comparable comparable level will be reviewed against the government's progress the united states pledged 600 million us dollars in civilian aid to afghanistan next year but made half of it conditional on progress in peace talks underway with the taliban in doha i want to be clear I want to be clear that the choices made in peace negotiations will affect the size and scope of future international support and assistance The United States looks forward to reviewing progress in the areas I mentioned in one year's time. President Trump's November Another top donor Germany pledged 510.88 million US dollars in 2021 and signaled it would keep contributing until 2024 but also stressed that progress towards ending almost 20 years of war was needed. More news from Afghanistan. Twin explosions in the central Afghan province of Bamiyan killed at least 14 people and wounded 45 more provincial officials said on Tuesday. The two bombs hidden at a side of a road in a market in Bamiyan city killed 12 civilians and two traffic policemen. The bombings occurred while the international community pledged assistance for Afghanistan at a conference in Switzerland hoping that peace negotiations between the government and the Taliban will end nearly two decades so far. No group has claimed responsibility so far and the insurgent group Taliban has also denied involvement. In news from Pakistan, in view of rising rape cases in Pakistan, its federal cabinet has approved in principle two anti-rape ordinances aimed at awarding exemplary punishment to rapists including chemical castration and hanging. This comes when there has been much debate around rape laws in Pakistan since the rape and murder of a 7-year-old girl and more recently the motorway gang rape case. To curb increasing rape incidents in the country, the Federal Cabinet of Pakistan has approved in principle two anti-rape ordinances that change the definition of rape and are aimed at awarding exemplary punishment to rapists. including chemical castration and hanging but not in public the decision was made during a federal cabinet meeting chaired by prime minister imran khan where the law ministry presented a draft of the anti rape ordinance local media reports said this is the first time in the history of pakistan that the definition of rape had been changed by incorporating transgender and gang rape in it This comes when there has been much debate around rape laws in Pakistan since the rape and murder of a 7-year-old girl in 2018 and more recently the motorway gang rape. 
Prime Minister Imran Khan had earlier also called for punishments like chemical castration and public execution for those found guilty in rape cases. Moving on to news from Nepal. Amid growing calls for the winter session of the House, lawmakers in Nepal have accused Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's government of undermining the parliament by not calling its winter session and issuing ordinances one after another. The budget session ended in 2nd of July after the Oli government suddenly recommended prorogation. Lawmaker of the main opposition Nepali Congress in the National Assembly, Radhesh Yam Adhikari on Tuesday accused Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's government of undermining the parliament by not calling its winter session and issuing ordinances one after another. The budget session ended on July 2 after the Oli government suddenly recommended prorogation following an intra-party feud in the ruling Nepal Communist Party. Adhikari argued that the government is trying to rule on the basis of ordinance, bypassing the parliament the sole body for enacting laws. Echoing similar sentiment, former speaker Damanna Dhungana said the government by not calling the new session of parliament was trying to give an impression that other organs of the state were not significant. Meanwhile, amid growing calls for the winter session of the House, Speaker Agni Sapkota said that his office is fully prepared to hold the meetings, leaving it up to the government to decide. In news from Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan government is digging a moat around one of its largest landfills to keep out hungry elephant herds and reduce conflicts between the animals and villagers. Dozens of elephants lumber out of the forest daily into the garbage dump in eastern Ampara for wilted vegetable scraps. Every day, dozens of elephants lumber out of the forest into one of the Sri Lanka's three largest landfills in eastern Ambara district, located next to a wildlife protection zone, looking for something to eat. They rummage through heaps of trash, picking out wilted bits of vegetables with their trunks. The elephants have also been eating plastic along with the food scraps and this is now slowly killing them, officials say. Electric fences were put up but the elephants have made their way in and have been helping themselves to the easy food supply. The government is now digging large trenches around the facility to keep them out. But villagers are not convinced. <laughs> The dam is not the only target of the hungry elephants. The villagers in the area have always had an uneasy coexistence with the wild herds, but the situation is only getting worse, locals' residents say. Human deaths due to elephants number between 20 to 80 per year. Moving on, a village in India's southern Kerala state has been witnessing a surge in tourist footfall amid the COVID-19 pandemic due to an invasive aquatic plant that has lent a scenic attraction to the location. The pink flowering plant named Forked Fanwort has also created widespread interest among social media users. Awala Pandi village in Kozi Kode city of India's southern Kerala state is witnessing a surge in tourist footfall even amid the pandemic as an invasive aquatic plant has lent a scenic attraction to it. The pink flowering plant named Fork Fanwort, which belongs to the family of Cambomba Farkata, has attracted widespread interest among social media users. It is locally known as Moulin Pile and is native to South America. More than 10 years it has been here, but since last three years, uh, it became blooming like this, especially this year. And uh, within three days, people around the village and even out of the district came to watch here. Even uh, children, including uh, using their vehicle, so many people came to watch this area. Due to a steady surge in the number of tourists, several small-scale vendors have turned up in the area to earn some money out of the bloom. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Asia Newsline 
and follow us on Twitter at as Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.